Hey everyone, today I'd like to do a video on how to add a capacitor to your HO scale model locomotive. Although we'll be using this Pico model as an example, I'll try to keep this tutorial as generic as possible. You might wonder what a capacitor is and why you'd even want one. A capacitor is an electronic component that can hold some charge for a short amount of time. What this means is that if your layout has dead zones like the one you just saw, a capacitor can keep your locomotive alive just long enough for it to pass by. This is especially handy on traditional two-rail DC layouts, but even here with this AC layout, this locomotive is having some issues. I suspect it's because this locomotive wasn't actually designed for AC in the first place, and the converter version still has the wrong wheels, so I'm hoping the capacitor will fix the problem. For whatever reason, the steps that you need to take here are very poorly documented by the manufacturers. I had to do a fair amount of research to figure out how to do this, and I'll start with a quick disclaimer. This requires a fair bit of soldering, and the components required vary between different manufacturers. Also, do so at your own risk, because an incorrectly installed capacitor could ruin your locomotive, or worse. This diagram shows the circuit that you need to implement in order to get your capacitor hooked up. It's specific to Pico locomotives, but other manufacturers like ESU also have similar setups. I'll share another link in the description where you can look that up. Given ESU's popularity, this method should therefore work for a vast majority of models. What we're looking here is actually pretty straightforward. You have the capacitor itself with a certain minimum rating. You have a 100 ohm resistor, and you have a diode. The specifications may vary between different decoders, so make sure to check with the manufacturer if you're unsure. At the end of the day, all the circuit does is ensure that the charge flows the right way and that your digital controller doesn't think that there's a short circuit. So now that we know what we need to do, we need to figure out if our locomotive has any of the circuitry built in already, or if we need to implement the circuit from scratch. In Pico's case, the locomotives already come with both the diode or the resistor, or wiring with a specific slot for each. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use a multimeter to figure out what's what, and then come up with a game plan for where I need to solder these components. So now I've figured out exactly where I need to put the capacitor, the diode, and the resistor and it also turned out that there was an additional required soldering joint. On this locomotive, the slot for the diode is labeled D7, and the slot for the resistor is labeled R6, and then the joint is required R7. These are gonna vary from locomotive to locomotive, and I'll add a link in the description with some examples that Pico has provided. But I think for the most part, you'll need to uh, do some trial and error here to figure out uh, what's what. So let's get into it. Here's the capacitor, diode, and resistor that are required. And I was able to get all of these on Amazon. In terms of tools, all you need are the basics here. So some solder, tweezers, and wire cutters. And then of course your soldering iron. Check out the description for more detailed specs. Now that we know exactly what we need to do, we're ready to get started. I'll just remove the decoder to make things easier, and then jump right in. Here's the finished product. Just a couple things to note. First of all, the negative end of the capacitor is clearly marked, 
and the stripe of the diode should be on the left side. Before we place the locomotive back on the tracks, it's really important to do some more measurements with the multimeter. The current should not flow in the wrong direction, and you should see resistance. Back on the layout, it's really easy to test if the capacitor works. Just turn the power off and look for the lights to fade slowly. If this doesn't happen, double check that everything is soldered properly, and also check to see if you need to program your decoder. If all that's good, then you can start testing your locomotive to see how it runs. Mine seemed to be working fine, so I took it back down to that problematic spot, and luckily found that it wasn't stuttering anymore. Thank you so much for watching, hope you found this helpful, and subscribe for more Model Train tips.